Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Stroud, and thanks for joining me today. Today's topic is the menstrual cycle. Now guys, don't touch that dial. If you understand the concepts of today's talk, you'll understand more than the majority of practicing physicians do about the menstrual cycle. We're gonna go start to finish, all of the hormones, ovulation, simply everything you need to know to understand the menstrual cycle. So thanks for joining us. Let's look now at the menstrual cycle utilizing a Creighton model Napper Technology menstrual chart. This is a fundamental part of the Creighton model fertility care approach. We'll talk much more about that in other discussions. But let's look first at this chart the way that it's laid out. We can see that the menstrual cycle begins with the menstrual period, obviously, followed by an infertile period of dry days, followed by a fertile mucus days, followed again by infertile days. This is the basic fundamental pattern of the menstrual cycle. So as the period is ending, that's actually the beginning of a new menstrual cycle. Under the influence of a hormone called FSH that comes from the base of the brain called the pituitary gland, FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone. FSH causes a follicle within the ovary to begin to grow. As that follicle grows and grows, it produces estrogen. Estrogen makes the lining of the uterus begin to thicken to eventually receive an embryo later in the cycle. Uh, the follicle continues to grow over the first half of the menstrual cycle until it reaches about two centimeters in diameter. And we call that a mature follicle. At two centimeters, that pituitary gland at the base of the brain releases another hormone, luteinizing hormone or LH. If you've ever used the ovulation predictor kits, they're measuring luteinizing hormone in the urine. LH causes that mature follicle to rupture or to explode. Strangely enough, ovulation is really a ruptured ovarian cyst. The egg comes out of the follicle, goes into the end of the fallopian tube, and if sperm are present, that's where fertilization takes place. Now in this chart, we've superimposed the hormone levels at the various portions of the menstrual cycle. If you look at the bottom of the chart, you can see the black bars. They represent estrogen levels or estradiol levels, and the red bars represent progesterone levels. As we discussed, as the menstrual cycle is completing, a follicle begins to grow, and during those early dry days, the follicle, as it's growing, produces estrogen. As the follicle increases in size, so does the amount of estrogen produced, until when it reaches its mature size of about two centimeters, we see a peak in the estrogen level. Then that mature follicle ruptures or ovulates. The follicle uh, later forms the corpus luteum, and that produces progesterone. Progesterone is shown and the red bars at the bottom of the graph. And you can see the peak in the progesterone production about four days after ovulation. And then it begins to fall at the end of the cycle, signaling the end of the menstrual cycle if pregnancy has not occurred. This structure that used to be the follicle that ruptured becomes a new structure called the corpus luteum. And that's where the money is in the menstrual cycle because corpus luteum makes progesterone. Progesterone, unlike estrogen, freezes the lining of the uterus. It holds it still in time. It's analogous to pressing pause on a DVD. The corpus luteum is making progesterone, holding the lining steady, waiting on a signal. And that signal is pregnancy. If pregnancy is not achieved in a given menstrual cycle, after about 14 days of progesterone production by the corpus luteum, the corpus luteum dies, Progesterone goes from very high to nothing, and that's the signal to slough the lining, have a menstrual period, and the entire process begins again. Here I'm showing what's happening both in the ovary and with the lining of the uterus at the same time. So just like in the other graph, the first section is the menstrual period, and that's followed by what's shown here as the proliferative phase or that uh, infertile stretch of dry days, followed by ovulation, shown here at around day 14 or halfway through the cycle, followed by uh, an infertile phase, which is also called the post-ovulatory phase or the luteal phase or the secretory phase. Those words all mean the very same thing. 
and you can see on the top as the follicle grows estrogen production goes up as estrogen goes up the lining of the uterus becomes thicker then ovulation occurs the follicle ruptures the egg comes out and then the new structure the corpus luteum is formed and remember that's what produces the progesterone So let's put both graphs together. We see estrogen rising in this graph as the follicle increases in size. As estrogen rises, the lining of the uterus of the endometrium thickens, ovulation occurs, the corpus luteum is formed, and after that, progesterone rises in the luteal phase. If pregnancy is achieved in a given cycle, the baby, the embryo, begins to make HCG, the pregnancy hormone. HCG's real job is it feeds back to the corpus luteum and says don't do that thing you usually do and stop making progesterone, keep making progesterone, and in fact crank up the level of the progesterone production. The reason a pregnant woman doesn't have a menstrual cycle when she's pregnant is because the baby's making HCG, which is feeding back to the corpus luteum to make progesterone. Progesterone freezes the lining of the uterus. That's the menstrual cycle, start to finish. If you understand that, you're an expert. And thanks for joining me.